using a three quarter inch socket, we're going to go ahead and remove the wheel. Go ahead and remove the upper link bolt and the lower link bolt that goes into the control arm. What we want to do is remove this lower bolt from the clevis fork on the spring and shock unit. What we're also going to do is loosen this bolt on the back of the clevis fork for the uh, spring and shock unit. What might happen is if this clevis fork slides up the shock, that is going to alter the spacing here. So what we're going to do, you can do one of two things. I'm going to use a pick and I'm going to score this unit or you can use a tape measure and measure the distance from the bottom of the clevis fork to the bottom of the shock unit. When you go to reassemble the new component, you're going to want to be able to get the setting uh, or preliminary setting as close as factory as possible. So scoring it, you'll be able to get a measurement afterwards, or you can just use a tape measure and do it now. Go ahead and remove the lower clevis fork bolt. I'm going to go ahead and remove this upper nut right here for the coolant reservoir. And remove this bolt right here. I want to go ahead and lift up and Pull the coolant reservoir up and set that aside. That's going to give us access to the four bolts for the upper portion of the strut. Now we're going to go ahead and remove all four of these nuts off the strut unit. Next, we want to use a pair of pliers or cutting dykes remove the cotter pin from this upper ball joint. Now what we're going to want to do is loosen this nut and take it off almost all the way, but don't remove it. Now we do have the lower portion of the suspension supporter. You can use a jack or a stand of some sort. On the top, we're going to go ahead and strike the knuckle to release this upper ball joint. Now we're going to go ahead and lower the jack. And see that ball joint separate. We're now going to go ahead and remove the nut from the ball joint the rest of the way. Let's go ahead and move this upper control arm up and out of the way. And rotate your strut down and out. Now we want to go ahead and swap over the fork onto this unit here. You can use a tape measure and it's roughly about an inch from the bottom of the fork to the bottom of the strut. So when we swap this over, we're gonna get that same measurement over here. We're gonna go ahead and install the clevis fork here with the bolt. We just want to get it started. We're not going to tighten this down because this is going to allow a little bit of movement for final adjustments in the end. I'm going to go ahead and lift that strut up. We're going to try and get that clevis pin bolt started here just to hold that in place. I'm going to use the jack to raise the suspension up. We 
We're now going to get that nut put on the back side of the clevis pin bolt. Just get that started. We put some anti seize on there. And we're going to go ahead and snug this bolt down a little bit more on the top for the clevis pin fork. All right, we're going to go ahead and snug this down for now. Let's go ahead and get that upper ball joint lined back up in that knuckle. Get that nut started on there. And just thread it on as far as you can. Now we're going to go ahead and lower the jack. I'm going to go ahead and install the four nuts on the top of the shock unit. I'm just going to go ahead and snug those up. I'm going to go ahead and torque these upper shock nuts down to 70 foot pounds. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this little vent retainer right here. I'm going to go ahead and set the overflow coolant reservoir back into place. Install that bolt down here. Get that started a few threads. Then we're going to take this little retainer nut right here and get that threaded on there. The bolt for the clevis fork to the shock, I'm going to go ahead and torque that down to 90 foot-pounds. The clevis fork to the control arm bolt, I'm going to snug that down. And now we're going to go ahead and torque that to 125 foot-pounds. Go ahead and snug up this upper ball joint nut. We're now going to go ahead and torque this nut to 55 foot-pounds. So on the casting nut, you want to make sure that you line up one of the notches so you can put the cotter pin through. In our case here, it's a little bit off, so we're going to go ahead and tighten this just a hair bit more. With the notch lined up, we're going to go ahead and put the cotter pin in. Just tap that in. Grab the pliers. And snip off excess. Install the lower bolt into the lower control arm. Install the upper link bolt. Go ahead and get that nut started. You just want to go ahead and snug this bolt up and then we'll do the same for the top bolt. Go ahead and torque this bolt to 100 foot-pounds. I'm going to torque the lower bolt to 85 foot-pounds. Go ahead and get that wheel installed. Go ahead and snug these down. Torque range is 85 foot-pounds to 115. We're going to actually torque these to 100 foot-pounds. Do this in a crisscross pattern. <laughs> 